Hello, and thank you for choosing to watch this short video about some of the model vehicles seen in Thunderbirds and the other Jerry Anderson TV series of the 1960s. Thunderbirds was set in the 21st century and followed the adventures of International Rescue, who are a privately operated organisation dedicated to saving lives where regular resources are unable or unlikely to succeed. International Rescue had a unique, highly advanced set of vehicles and machines suitable for all manner of dangerous situations. Thunderbird 1 would arrive first and organise the rescue operation, and then Thunderbird 2 would transport the necessary rescue equipment to the danger zone. For many people watching the show, a regular highlight was seeing what new vehicle would emerge from Thunderbird 2's pod that week, and what function it would serve in the rescue operation. These vehicles were always a thrill to see in action. They were terrific designs, brilliantly realised by the visual effects team, who always made them move and operate convincingly. The models themselves were well detailed and looked used with signs of wear and tear. The vehicles often ran on chunky caterpillar tracks. This really helped to convey their size and power. Even today I watch this stuff and I still believe it could all work. Not only were caterpillar tracks common among the vehicles, but often they featured the same type of chassis and wheelbase. This added a subconscious level of credibility that this machinery was possibly something that was commercially available and Jeff and Brains had souped it up for International Rescue's needs. It suggests the perfect solution with common parts making it easier to maintain. There is after all only half a dozen people at the base. Many of the vehicles had the same four-wheel or eight-wheel Caterpillar track sub-assembly. For years it was on my mind that in terms of the making of the show this was probably some sort of a toy or model from the day as it was used on so many of the vehicles and the vehicles were often seen in the middle of dangerous situations for example pushing burning rubble around or it was next to a fiery explosion so they probably needed to have a few of these things around in the late 1990s early 2000s and thanks to the internet and like-minded jerry anderson fans the source of this cool looking caterpillar tracks came to light I remember seeing a post about an auction featuring toys from the 1960s and, and the words that were something like vintage toy tractor used in the making of Thunderbirds sold at auction. I'd never heard of a Vickers Vigor tractor before, but here it was. The toy in question was made by Victory Industries and it's a 1 16th scale motorised toy model of um, something called a Vickers Vigor tractor. The toy is about 13 inches long, it was made in 1960 in the UK, it had two motors, it was battery powered so the tracks on either side were independently powered so you could steer it from a remote control that was connected with a wire to a handheld controller to drive this thing around. The toy evidently was not a, not a big seller which probably explains a bit about why it took so long for this particular thing to come to light. It is based on a real machine called a Vickers Vigor tractor, this is the 1 16th scale toy. And that's a, that's a real thing. And you can, it's not the same size as it appears to be in the show. It's about a half or two thirds of the size of, you know, the mole or those things. But, but, but can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine actually having one of these things? Like the actual machine, the toy seems to be pretty robust. It was a pretty big toy and a decent size for the sort of visual effects work they needed. In the video on the girder bridge, I showed uh, where the bits of the girder bridge are on the mole, and here's that same sequence with the Vickers Vigor tractor uh, added. The mole, the firefly, the transmitter truck, the recovery vehicle, drilling and crushing excavator, the restraining outfit, and the half track, the Grand Houseman explosives tractor. There's a bulldozer in Atlantic Inferno. Um, it shows up briefly on a vehicle in the movie Thunderbird 6, and I think that same vehicle is in Captain Scarlet. So they, they certainly use this thing a lot. However, there were other vehicles used by International Rescue. Some of them were much smaller, still running on Caterpillar tracks, but these utilised another toy of the day, the Mark's Baby Bulldozer. This toy was battery-powered as well, not remote control, but battery-powered, about 10 inches in length, wheels about one and a quarter inches, you can probably figure out. And this toy was used for the front track assemblies on the Grey and Houseman explosives tractor. And I'm not sure if the, the, the track assembly itself was used as is, because it's a different configuration. I think the track may be slightly longer, but certainly the sort of mechanism around those wheels is used. And also there's a piece where you can see the engine, and that's also used on those front wheel assemblies. So this had 
the Vickers Bigger <laughs> tractor on the back and the baby bulldozer for the front and numerous other kit parts on there. It's just a fantastic looking vehicle. The full track assembly seems to have been used as the basis for, again, another couple of the smaller international rescue vehicles seen in Edge of Impact and 30 Minutes Afternoon. These are very similar machines with different sort of rescue apparatus on them. Possibly the most unusual vehicle to emerge from the pod is the monobrake. It seems to have a sort of telescopic arm that looks like it's similar to the actual monorail track. But this is never actually deployed and they only use the monobrake to sort of drive around. So you don't actually see it operating at its full capacity, which is sort of interesting. Anyway, it's another cool looking vehicle. Again, it's smaller than the others. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, so please use the comments and correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like it's using a, a clockwork toy, the Marx Climbing Tractor which was a clockwork toy made by Marx, approximately eight and a quarter inches long. The monobrake has four wheels on either side, but this one has two, so it looks like they probably cannibalized a couple. There's a neutralizing tractor that brains operate to move when you're dead that seems to use this same uh, wheel assembly. It may even be cannibalized from the monobrake model or, or vice versa. There were some really large vehicles that were seen in, in Thunderbirds, massive machines, one of which was the Grand Houseman road layer vehicle, again seen in End of the Road. Um, this was a, a giant machine that ran on sort of two or four, two on each side, four sets of big caterpillar tracks. And these came from a huge toy, a two foot long, if you can believe it, remote control toy called the Tiger Joe Tank. So the road layer model was about four feet long or so, and a couple of feet high, huge model. And interestingly, the cabin on the top appears to be made from the turret of the Tiger Joe tank. This model was customized and appears in a later episode with sort of different details and it's, it's yellow instead of red. And then that model in turn was sort of cannibalized to use for the sort of back half, the processing unit of the crab logger in a path of destruction. The Tiger Joe tank appears almost exactly as is in the episode of The Imposters, where there's numerous military forces sort of mobilized and the tank is pretty much the Tiger Joe tank, just painted with some details added. Tiger Joe tank appears again, almost as is in a Captain Scarlet episode as the Unitron, which is a state of the art tank-like vehicle. A Tiger Joe tank is, is again sort of used as the chassis for the running gear for the Lunar tank in Crater 101. Um, and a, a lot of the sort of top of the hull is used as well. It looks very futuristic. And the Lunar Tractor, the yellow tractor that Captain Scarlet and Captain Blue and Lieutenant Green use to get into the Nistron complex, I think uses a different set of tracks again. I think from a Japanese missile tank toy. I'm not 100% sure. Again, if anyone knows, please uh, put it in the comments below. The Tiger Joe tank was also used for the basis of the A-14 assault vehicle in Joe 90. And in the series The Secret Service, there's an episode with an advanced military vehicle called the Aqua Tank, which uh, is very much like the A-14 and again uses the Tiger Joe Tank wheel assembly. In the live action series UFO, the Shadow Mobiles use the tracks and wheels from the Tiger Joe Tank for their running gear. They have they have five wheels instead of six, and it's sort of reconfigured a bit, but it's definitely the same running gear. And the shots of the mobiles in this show are just absolutely fantastic. I think some of the best miniature effects ever are put on film. The Anderson shows always put so much on screen every week, and I think probably in part to really smart, utilization of, of model kits and toys and, and, and available things that they were able to create these worlds on such a scale so believably every week and um, you know it doesn't look cheap everything looks right it's just incredible really incredible so that's about it for this video I hope you enjoyed it please click the like and subscribe button if you want to Look out for the Girder Bridge video, which is similar to this. It talks about the Girder Bridge kit. Visit my website to see some original artwork, some blogs on different movie, sci-fi sort of stuff. And again, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.